First of all, Mr Mayor, I just want to thank you and the team um, for what you've done in the efforts you've made to send us accurate information um, during the scrutiny process, despite the government taking their time in giving us final information on what we could spend. We've, we've struggled, I know, and it's been, it's been difficult, so thank you for at least trying with that. Um, I wanted to ask you some questions about your strategic investment fund. Um, at the Budget and Performance Committee meeting on the 7th of January, um, you outlined some of the spending that's been made from the strategic investment fund, uh, which is where you've put some of the business rates that you've uh, received on top of what was expected in previous years. Um, we heard there was £101.89 million allocated from the fund, but our calculations worked out that left £70.7 million unallocated. We received a letter this morning that was received by the Assembly last night, um, giving more details of the projects and what's been spent so far. That seems to confirm that figure of £70.7 million unallocated allocated from the strategic investment fund. Is that is that the right number as you understand it? Yes, there are thereabouts, yeah. Okay, so we, we asked you um, why the money has not been spent, because it was put aside, most of it was put aside two years ago, some last year. Um, why, why is this? Why is this sitting there? The main reason was the huge uncertainties around Brexit and the impact that would have. If we'd have left in October with no deal, we'd have had to make sure we had the uh, support in place in a strategic sense to help uh, going forward and so that was the reason why a decision was taken to uh, not spend all of it in that year. Also we had no idea what happened going forward in relation to business rates and other support from uh, central government. You'll remember late in the day uh, the question referred to from a previous questioner, a decision was taken for us not to retain uh, the full amount of business rates. We do want to, uh, uh, we've got ideas ourselves how to spend this £7 million pounds, uh, but I did make the offer to you and other colleagues in the Budget Performance Committee to feel free to let us have any other uh, ideas you've got. Actually, there is still a possibility of us leaving the EU in December this year without a deal. And so I suspect we won't want to uh, spend this money until we know probably in June, July what's happening with, you'll be aware that that's the deadline by which the government's going to ask for an extension. Um, but we've got a good idea where we want this money to go. But again, it's not, fi it's not uh, the finished uh, uh, um, uh, decision yet, so feel free to let us know any other ideas you've got to allocate this £7 million. Pounds. Yeah, I mean, I mean, with respect, we, we have had an Assembly EU exit working group active looking at the potential impacts of Brexit. We've come very close to having uh, a no-deal exit on a number of occasions, and it would have made sense to get that money out of the door for the things that we could see coming down the line, the potential impacts. I mean, we are quite well aware of, of what was well, going except, on. I've, I've been highlighting some well, of the impacts except, potentially on housing. Well, except, had we spent this money in expectation of a no-deal Brexit, and lo and behold, it didn't happen, I suspect one or two of you would have criticised us for preemptively using this money for a scenario that didn't occur. Yeah, I don't Which mean... is why the sensible thing to do is to keep the money there and to make sure it's available uh, should we need to do so. See, I, I, don't, I don't agree with you that. I'm not talking about money specifically spent on Brexit itself, but on building up the resilience of London. I mean, that's what this strategic investment money ought to be used for, to make us resilient to the kinds of economic shocks that a no-deal Brexit would have caused. And I think, I just don't agree with you that not spending it was the right thing to do. £71 million is a lot of money sitting there being fairly useless, effectively shoved down the back of the sofa that could have gone on helping Londoners, um, you'll be pleased to know we do have ideas in our budget amendment for spending this money. I hope you'll listen. I hope you might make some changes in your final budget this year in terms of building up London's resilience to Brexit, but also its resilience and supporting communities generally, because that's what money should be spent on. Sorry, and that, I hope you're looking forward to seeing our exactly. But later, Mr Mayor. <laughs> Okay. Um, I do want to ask a further question about the Young Londoners Fund. Um, we, we are putting our, an amendment forwards later on this afternoon from the Green Group, um, which suggests refunding that. Um, now, I, I don't know what your plans are for this. I know you, um, you introduced it with some additional business rates that we received after the year after we proposed creating it effectively in our 2017 proposals. Um, in the um, more detailed budget lines you, you get in the budget um, submission documents for the Communities and Intelligence 
directorate, you can see the Young Londoners Fund spending sort of dwindling and, and, and coming to zero by 2023. Um, and I'm collecting information from councils, as I usually do, on youth services. Um, we can see there are cuts in several boroughs. Seven boroughs are planning an increase, which is an improvement so far that we've, we've seen. But there's not in any way uh, a refunding of youth services. Um, and we do rightly make a conservative estimate of business rates. So what I'm asking you now... Your amendment or asking you? No, I'm asking now about the business rates, because we do we rightly um, underestimate the amount of business rates we receive. It would be completely wrong to overestimate them. Um, and every year we do get in slightly more business rates. So I am hoping that when we get the final returns, you're considering that the, the Young Londoners Fund might be getting first dibs on any extra money. Is that something you're considering? So it's worth reminding ourselves why councils have to make the decisions they're making in relation to youth centres. Uh, I was with a council leader last week. His council has lost 62% of monies from central government over the last Yeah, we know uh, how hard-pressed they are. Yeah. Uh, you'll also be aware, which was part of your, your speech slash comment you didn't mention, was it's not just business rates money, it's business rates growth money. Yeah which is a one-off sum of money which I diverted towards the Young Londoners Fund. Clearly, if the situation occurs where we've got additional revenues raised, I'll consider how best to use it. But I think I've demonstrated, uh, and I've talked on a number of occasions, I've, the importance of dealing with the causes of uh, violent crime. And one of those is uh, giving young people constructive things to do, which the Young Londoners Fund allows them to do so. There are other policies we have, which also support young people, from the Sports Unite Fund uh, to the VRU, and other funds uh, we have and we'll continue to make sure we invest in young people where we can. Excellent. I just have one final rather technical question. Um, you were discussing with Assemblymember Copley the um, Rough Sleeping Fund. The government announced yesterday allocations from um, the Rough Sleeping Initiative and within that was £6.6 .6 million to the GLA. Um, again, looking at the budget submission documents, the more detailed budget lines, um, which showed the income. There was a gap in the income from central government there, and it seems like the draft budget doesn't contain yet that money that Kay, that was announced yesterday by the government. Is that right, or did, did you already know about this and put it in the initial budget? Sure. Um, I think what happens there is that illustrates the problem, which is, you know, whereas compared to affordable housing, where we got a six-year deal with, with the government as discussed, with rest sleeping, it's very ad hoc, it's very drip drip, and so far the government has been resistant to our suggestions that a longer term strategic plan is needed. Yeah. Um, so, as you say, that, that was an announcement that came yesterday from the government. Clearly, discussions go on with um, MHCG, CLG all the time, but we couldn't put any numbers into public budget documents in any case until such time as it's a public announcement, and we will we will look and see whether we've got the information now that we need to put that into the documents for the final draft budget, but it just, it really is illustrative of the problem we face. Yeah, absolutely, and, it, and it's, you know, it's councils all over the country having to make an application for, for an annual grant. It, it just, it makes no sense when we, we know the directory, the direction of travel with, with homelessness and that we need to provide long-term support. So thank you. Thank you.